So when you enter the basilica, you'll start walking up the nave towards the main altar. You'll see Bernini's Baldacchino. It's tough to miss. It's 98 feet tall, so you'll see it. Once you get up to the altar, stop in front of the Baldacchino. Don't go past it. Stand right here in front of it. Now from this position, look up towards the dome. And notice that the base of the dome, which is actually called the drum, that the drum or the base sits on top of these four giant pillars. And these pillars are called piers. And each of them are about 60 feet wide, so they're massive. And as you're standing there looking at them, take special note of the one that's to the left of the Baldacchino. And if you follow that pier all the way down to the ground, you'll notice at the base, there's a large niche. And inside that niche, there's a statue of a woman standing inside. And this woman, she looks either like maybe she's taunting a bull with her cape, or maybe she's shaking dirt out of a rug. Whatever it is she's doing, she's the thing that we're looking for. Okay, so this particular statue is of St. Veronica, and she's one of the four statues that you'll find at the base of each of the piers. And each of these statues are saints who represent one of the four relics that the church owned during the 1600s, which was when these statues were created. Okay, so if you know who St. Veronica is, you probably already know what relic she's supposed to represent, and so her secret might not be such a surprise to you. And for those of you who don't know who she is, you may have missed the face on the cloth that she's holding. I did. It's much easier to see it in a photo than it is when you're standing in the middle of St. Peter's and she's towering 16 feet above you. So we know now that this statue is of St. Veronica and we know that there's a face on the cloth that she's holding. The next question is, well, who is she and what's the deal with the face on the cloth anyway? Well, here's the deal. Initially, she was depicted in the Gospels as some woman who was suffering from some type of bleeding hemorrhage for more than a decade. And then at some point, she ran across Jesus, approached him, and then reached out and touched the edge of his cloak, which then miraculously cured her of this illness. It wasn't until some 400 years after that that she was actually referred to as Veronica for the first time. As the centuries wore on, her story took on several different versions. The current version first appeared sometime during the 13th century and is the one that managed to stick. Here, Veronica is following an exhausted Jesus as he carries his cross through the streets of Jerusalem on his way to his crucifixion. And then at some point along the way, she steps forward, takes off her veil, and uses it to wipe the blood and sweat from his face. And then miraculously, his face appears on the cloth. 